Ah, so, in light of some of the stupider comments I've seen and the piss poor attempts at people trying to troll, don't reduce yourself to that, it's, uh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> I thought I would do a video on the last art of the troll. First off, what is trolling exactly? Well, trolling is supposedly, I say supposedly because it does often go off the rails, trolling is supposed to be a light-hearted and humorous attempt at provoking a greatly exaggerated response to something quite plain and innocuous. The purpose of the troll is usually split along two lines or a combination of the two, either for the amusement of the troll or to draw attention to what is being trolled. In the current paradigm, it's to knock some people down a peg and repackage them to the world as stupid or clumsy, or soon to be visited by the Grim Reaper, and by that I don't mean Kamala Harris. The reason I say it's a lost art, aside from the time span implied in such a phrase, is due to the evolution of the internet itself. In prior years, when the internet was still in its infancy, it being quite new on the internet, not being nearly as censorious as it is now, coupling this with everyone being thicker skinned, Trolling wasn't being paraded as a great weapon of malice as it is now. If it was before, the quantity and the less populated internet might offer an explanation of why it would not have been perceived as such. Nowadays, however, the internet has become a critical cornerstone of the 21st century world. Damn near everything we interact with is either electronic or digitized. As a result, things like controversy, aggression, catching eyeballs, attention, this is the currency of the digital space, and those horrid concoctions has taken the art of trolling with a chain around its neck and dragged it kicking and screaming through the mud. As such, much trolling has devolved into a dulled, witless free-for-all where people just throw everything at the wall to see what sticks in order to gain attention. The old staple of quick wit and or verbal prowess that was common among the internet's more funnier comebacks is either greatly isolated or damn near gone. At least for one side of the aisle, which is where politics comes into play. One of my earliest videos featured Jordan Peterson talking to Michael Malice, saying he was surprised the right-wingers became the jesters, which I found rather odd because I knew they would become the jokesters if you simply follow history and actually have listened to Professor Peterson's own words. Left-leaning people tend to be high in creativity. They tend to bring in new ideas, new developments, hence why the new technologies, Silicon Valley, is overwhelmingly left-leaning. Now, during the early 2000s, when the internet was still blossoming, you had a Republican in the White House, George W. Bush, a war-hungry neocon, much of the ire of the left was against the Iraq war, the left still being anti-war at the time. Shame they didn't make more of a song and dance about things being done at home that was a great violation of the US Constitution, things like the Patriot Act. But as we all know, the left has never been one to dismiss anything if it gives them the feeling of security. However, as Bush left office, the internet kept growing, social media became more prevalent, and the left were all too quick to throw objectivity out the window when a black man was president because, you know, hashtag diversity. So they sold out, embraced further censorship when their side has the reins of power, something the left is actually known for doing, seeing as they are unprincipled, power-hungry, psychotic swine. Nevertheless, restricting speech, making it socially unacceptable to discuss or criticize certain institutions, people, or ideas, is naturally going to dull your creative edge, making one bland and boring. Much like taking away the colors from the painter, you are going to stifle creativity. And now that I'm saying that out loud, it's going to make you stupider as well. The right's recognition of this downfall has given birth to its amusing counterpunching slogan, the left calm meme. And frankly, I'd like to add they can't really do comedy in general. One of the ironically funnier parts of the coof was watching late-night hosts try and do a show without the trained monkeys that is their audience being present, showing the world they are indeed painfully unfunny. But given this projection then, it is a natural inevitability that the right would ultimately end up the jokesters. It is now the task of the conservatives to conserve comedy and rescue it from the depths of the squeaky clean, corporatized, family-friendly bullshit it has become and take it to a hotel and violate it over and over again for a couple of rounds. Take a look at any forum or place that does spicy memes. The left wouldn't be caught anywhere near such a place. Unless they're off in a corner, sobbing uncontrollably because someone said there's only two genders and only women can give birth. I really wish that wasn't a joke. And then came 2016 and the election of the God Emperor. And of course, no talk of trolling would be complete without mentioning the best in the business, President Donald J. Trump. What Trump did was tear off the mask and show the world that the choice of Republican and Democrat in the current iteration is a farce, an illusion of choice. 
The machine runs the same regardless of who is in the White House, probably why so many think presidents are selected, not elected. The current one might actually give credence to that belief. Trump is an interesting character, though, because what makes him such an effective troll is both simple but also more complicated than meets the eye. If that sounds a bit contradictory and confusing, well, let's see if I can elaborate. First up, branding. This is Trump's strong suit. Not only is he recognizable, but he knows how to work his brand given who he is trolling. Despite him being a member of the elite in terms of, say, wealth, he presents himself as an outsider. He plays the role of the maverick, humorously, and he does it very, very well. I recall Michael Malice saying his favorite Trump tweet was something along the lines of, to all my haters, it's not my fault they were born fucked up. I'm not sure if he said that while president, but nevertheless, coming from a US president, that makes that line so much funnier. But the left does not understand that humor makes Trump relatable and likable. Something I despise about the left, one of many I assure you, is their stick up their ass prissy attitude when it comes to politicians nowadays. This deluded fantasy they have that people who everyone in society acknowledges lie with every sentence they speak, they somehow think serial liars must conduct themselves with a sense of decorum. Oh, I don't care if they're complete hypocrites and lie through their ass, as long as they sound good while doing it. Actually, that does explain why Obama is so revered, but anyway. Next up, his power position and who he is trolling. Now, not to take anything away from Trump, I'm a big fan of his work, both in and out of politics, but the majority of Trump's prowess is not so much predicated on anything he says. It's more about what he represents, a threat to the elite. A common fear is that of the unknown, and considering the machine was clearly petrified that Donald Trump would do permanent damage to the machine, which he did, he exposed it for the farce that it is, the reaction to him just being in the White House made every response from the press seem like they are in a constant state of being trolled. And if reaction was the goal of the troll and making your opposition look insane and unhinged, Trump is a master troll. But again, he is aided by the position of power and influence he is presumed to wield. Next up, the invention of Trump derangement syndrome. The media's consistent reaction to Trump's mere existence was so wacky, it made probably millions of people so disconnected from reality that they would irrationally hate a man who was by any objective measure actually a pretty good president. On the one hand, that is incredibly worrying. It's clear evidence a massive proportion of society are incredibly stupid and highly susceptible to piss-poor propaganda. But also hilarious on the other hand, at least to those of us that still have a sense of humor. And lastly, and this in my personal opinion, is what makes Trump the greatest troll. The lasting after-effect of his presidency. The post-Trump bump slump. Trump single-handedly made the mainstream media make him the sole focus of the entire business model. Make them lie, exaggerate constantly. Damn near every hour of every day for four straight damn years. Derail all of their credibility. Not that they had much of it to begin with. And when he left office, quote unquote, take all of their ratings with him. And this is what makes all of that so much funnier. All Trump did, all he had to do to achieve all of that was just do his job. Everything else the press did, all of the stupidity and the aftermath they now suffer is of their own making, a self-inflicted wound. And that is what makes Donald J. Trump the king. And that's all for today. Until next time.